speaking Dnipro region uh, because they're trying to to extend the front line. They're trying to show that they are able to attack on on various regions. For example, on uh, on those regions which are neither east nor south, like Dnipro or Zaporizhia or, or some others. Um, because they're really, I think they're very, really scared of, of Ukrainians making counteroffensive uh, on the south, on Kherson. The government is reacting to news of a store of ammunition having been detonated inside a Russian airbase in Crimea, killing one person. President Zelensky has said that Ukrainian forces were not behind the attack and suggested that partisans were responsible. Volodymyr Yemolenko is a Ukrainian philosopher and editor in chief of English language publication called Ukraine World, and he joins me, I hope, uh, now live from Kyiv. Uh, Volodymyr Yemolenko, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, hello. How much do we know about this business at the air base? Well, there is a different information. Ukrainian officials deny that this, uh, this Ukraine is behind this attack, but uh, Ukrainian public is discussing it with, uh, with big... Um, enthusiasm, I would say, because this might mean the first ever attack uh, on the occupied occupied Crimea. Uh, we don't know whether it was a, a rocket attack, missile attack, or indeed as, as a partisan at- attack, because there were numerous examples before that uh, of, of Ukrainians, uh, uh, soldiers uh, sneaking into Crimea and, and doing something, some harm to uh, Russian Russian military. But uh, it seems that Ukrainians are really becoming uh, much more brave, much more courageous, much more adventurous than they were. Uh, What is the Russian response? Do we know that yet? Well, the Russians were denying that this this happened first. Uh, The Russian propagandists were sharing the versions that it is just uh, something uh, from a bad, bad behavior on the locals. Uh, um, and um, some incident which has nothing to do with the war. But uh, as soon as there the were videos uh, in the Telegram in, in, and other social networks that this was a really huge explosion in the Russian air base, and uh, let me remind you that this is the air base that Russians are using for airstrikes against Ukrainian cities, so very important one. Well, I think Russians are per- perplexed because they they're really were not expecting that Ukrainians can uh, can reach out uh, to these targets. So uh, you mentioned that it's, it's a very important air base. Uh, do, do you think this, this is uh, something which is going to cause problems for the Russian offensive, the fact that the air base is gone? I mean, what sort of impact might it have on their attacks? Well, Ukrainian tactics over the past several months uh, was to cut Russians from logistic supplies, from uh, fuel supplies, from uh, uh, shells, ammunition supplies. That was a key tactic because we understand that Ukrainian army is still much weaker than the Russian army in terms of artillery, in, in terms of aviation. So the Ukrainian response has been asym- asymmetric, uh, not to to kill many Russian soldiers, but to cut Russians from supplies. This tactics was very efficient in February and March, and therefore Russians have left uh, the occupied territories of northern Ukraine and around Kyiv. Now they are focused on eastern Ukraine and southern Ukraine. But now Ukrainians are putting Russians in a very uncomfortable situation in the south, in particular in the occupied Kherson and Zaporizhia oblast, and this attack on possible attack, we still don't know what happened, uh, on Crimea uh, it can also be a sign for, for Russians that Ukrainians have actually a long-range uh, systems of fire. The other news that we have is um, uh, that over 14 people were killed after a shelling in the central region, uh, Nitropetrovsk. Again, uh, how much do we know about this? Well, unfortunately, this is, uh, it might sound very, very tragic and dramatic, but uh, we hear such news very, very often. Russians, every every night there is some shelling in some of the regions. Uh, Russians are really shelling every night, and every night we hear the news about uh, civilians who are dead. 
Uh, so unfortunately, this is the reality of the situation in Ukraine for already half a year. Uh, everybody from us is waking up every morning looking for news. And it's hardly been a- any morning when we didn't have the news about uh, dead civilians. So why Russians are picking Dnipro region? Uh, because they're trying to, to extend the front line. They're trying to show that they are able to attack on, on various regions, for example, on, uh, on those regions which are neither east nor south like Dnipro or Zaporizhia or, or some others, um, because they're really, I think they're very, really scared of, of Ukrainians making counteroffensive uh, on the south, on Kherson. Now, they've lost, they may have lost this air base, certainly for the moment, but uh, we hear the Russians have taken over a nuclear power plant in, in Crimea, and there are reports from the energy provider, Enerjoatam, I don't know if I'm saying that right, that they're reorienting its electricity production what does this mean? I mean, n- nuclear disasters are something that we all dread for, for you and for the world. Um, wh- how, how serious is this? It's very serious. Let me correct you a little bit. It's not n- nuclear p- plant in Crimea. It's nuclear plant near Zaporizhia, and oh. it's the biggest one in Europe. So Zaporizhia is a, is a city in the uh, eastern, eastern, southern Ukraine, and, and as Russians were advancing from Crimea, oh, so it's inside. They, it's inside Ukraine. This, this part. Of course, yeah. of course, mm-hmm. it's in, inside yeah. Ukraine. It's on the newly occupied territories. It's actually on the uh, left bank of Dnipro, our biggest river. And let me repeat: this, this is the biggest nuclear power plant in Europe functioning. So Russians are using this as a military base. They put their soldiers there. They put the artillery there. And of course, Ukrainians cannot respond because they're uh, they're afraid of of, uh, touching the nuclear power plant. And there were messages that uh, Russian generals who are on this power plant were saying that it will be either Russian or it will be just a desert. So they really consider a situation when they will be, for example, losing on these territories that they will, they might do something with this this nuclear plant, and uh, if they do something, that will be much much bigger disaster than Chernobyl in eighty six. Indeed, and the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has said that any attacks on a nuclear plant would be suicidal. Uh, this this must be one of the greatest fears for you all. We are talking, and our president talks, and uh, we journalists and. Um, People in Ukraine are talking about nuclear terrorism. So this is this is what Russians have been doing when in March they occupied Chernobyl nuclear power plant, and now they are occupying this Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, so the, the biggest in Europe, I think, the second largest in in, in the world. Uh, yes, this is they, they have they have taken this nuclear power plant as a hostage. Mm. Uh, Volodymyr Yemolenko in Kiev, thank you very much for joining us today here on Times Radio. Mm-hmm.